squirt. Flashback to 1974, Batman. I had a 1974 Suzuki 100, and one of the guys at the New England Sports Committee had a, a dirt squirt 100, and we used to battle it out racing uh, at NESC on the tracks like Lanesboro and uh, Pepperell, uh, South McMass, and they're pretty evenly matched. These these are very high quality, uh, assembled in America with mostly parts from Japan. Uh, the engine was made in Japan. The pop, where it says Hodaka on the tank, it says Pabatco underneath it. That stands for Pacific Basin Trading Company. And they were pretty successful selling these. They had, they had the 100, the 125, they even had a 250. They had some street versions. And this one's called the Dirt Squirt, which is kind of cool. It's got this little clam with legs on it. Uh, the little boots, it's kind of pretty cool, actually. Um, they had like a sense of humor. One of their bikes was a road tow, the Dirt Squirt. They had a 125 Combat Wombat. This 100 was in between a Mini in a full size bike in that it had a front tire that was a 19 inch instead of a 21 and the rear is a 17 instead of an 18 so the wheels were a little bit smaller. The frame was basically a full size frame. This one's serial number 352 EO00352. And you can see it has the original decal and paint on the air cleaner. It has the original fuel tank, which is in remarkably good condition. Uh, the badges on the tank are real nice. I believe these are the original handlebars. 99% sure it's the original shocks on it. Uh, the front fender is a Preston Petty mutter, uh, which is pretty common. Period correct modification. Uh, the rear one's the original steel one. I think the, the front rim was originally steel. It has a, a uh, um, another period correct aluminum front number plate on there. But uh, pretty cool piece, man. Uh, the colors are right, red, chrome. I love these bikes, they're really awesome, classics. This one, we just went through it. I'll grab the work order so I don't uh, speak out of school. But you can see that the um, previous owner had safety wired all of the uh, common racing thing they would do. They'd safety wire all the spokes. Uh, it's got a nice black sprocket, uh, brand new gold chain, uh, knobby tires. Um, appears to be mostly original. Let's put it on the stand and take a closer look. So keep your eyes on this mostly original classic here. Um, again, uh, it says on the gas cap, made in Japan, uh, right there. So these were Japanese engines, and from what I understand, they were assembled in the United States. So uh, if you do Wikipedia, I'm sure the whole history of the company will, will, will come up. I know the guys on the Hodaka forums get their panties in a bunch when I misquote, or I, I don't identify a part that's not original. So uh, I don't claim to be a Hodaka expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have been riding and, and uh, uh, racing with these since the 70s, so I know a little bit about them. This particular one here um, is an original Survivor. It's not rebuilt or restored. It was adult owned, um, runs and rides great, the engine transmission, everything. Surprisingly good power for a 100cc. I'm 220 pounds and this thing rockets up the hill with me on it, no problem. Um, it takes off really good. Uh, third gear seems to be the sweet spot. It's a tubular steel, full, full cradle chassis, good brakes. Uh, the suspension was good from the factory. I think the, the, the um, shocks and forks could probably need need use it a uh, rebuild their the original forks. There's definitely oil. There's there's definitely oil in them because they were leaking a little bit. And it looks like someone had replaced the rubbers on the top at some point. You can see the chrome is in decent condition on the forks on the fork lowers and the uppers. Um, the uh, it's a cool motorcycle. It's fun to ride. It's a cult classic. The techs went through it, tested the spark, put a new spark plug in it. Um, they uh, tested the compression. It's got 170 PSI, which is what it should be from new from the factory, to my knowledge. So it uh, it, it runs really strong. Uh, the fuel tank was drained and cleaned on the inside. They serviced and cleaned the fuel pet cocks. 
The carb was completely cleaned and serviced, removed, cleaned, dismantled, and serviced. New fuel lines, new vent lines. That's got BP-94 non-ethanol fuel, mixed 32 to 1. We put a new uni air filter, was oiled and installed inside the original air box, which has the original logos on it, and still has the original air box boot. Um, it's got new gear oil, MTL transmission oil. We put a new Magura three-quarter turn throttle on it. You can see the original throttle was replaced with a, with a, a higher quality Magura. Uh, new Uri hand grips. Uh, we put a new uh, kill switch on it. <coughs> we repaired the magneto ignition connectors. Uh, the clutch, the throttle, and the brake cables were all clean and lubed. <coughs> we adjusted the excuse me. We adjusted the front and rear brakes. Set the tire pressures. Installed a new gold drive chain. D did a full nut and bolt check on it. Um, steam cleaned it, hand washed it, buffed it, waxed it, detailed it. All the cycle parts were polished. Did a little minor touch up on the frame uh, most of the frame paints original some of it's touched up as you can see and uh, the engine case covers I believe were these repainted Ronnie yeah they, that yes, looks sir. like they were the original pegs original brake lever are, are intact the kicker starts started first kick for me the exhaust was removed and, and, and repainted uh, just a really cool cult classic love the chrome love the red it's the right colors uh, this was a dream bike for most kids back in the 70s and uh, it stood the test of time. The bike's 50 years old and, and it still uh, kicks ass. So we um, did a fair amount of work to it to uh, ensure it, uh, more of a preservation service than anything. Um, I grabbed the actual work order over here. And the total amount of time invested into it was 14 hours labor plus parts. Uh, we charged 120 an hour. So it was $1,941 to get it in uh, good running old condition as it is now. It was just um, needed, uh, needed to be gone through. It had been sitting for a little while in a, uh, the old guy's collection who had it. So if you have any questions about it, give us a call. 860-454-7024. Ship this anywhere in the country. We actually finance through Freedom Road Vintage Classic Bikes. So if you want to finance it, we can even get you financing on it. Um, we buy collections. That's how we get these bikes. If you have a collection you want to sell, give us a call. If you're interested in this one, call us. 860-454-7024. Thanks for watching. God bless America.